Excellent. So I have to ask, because you're an Oprah fan, yeah. your aha moment out of all of this, wow. is there one that stands out like far away from anything else? I think I had a lot of aha moments at the beginning when mm -hmm. I was first writing the songs and trying to get the CD together because it was such a difficult process. And I'd get little hints like I told you the note that I found on the table or um, something really weird that happened to me was um, this lady had approached me a couple years back saying, oh, you're Indian. I know a really good Indian singing teacher if you ever want lessons. And I'd kept her number on this piece of paper. And I kept the paper in a folder. And it was really funny because when I wrote Dera Piar, um, I couldn't get a chorus. Mm -hmm. and I didn't know how I wanted the chorus to go. Everything that I wrote, all my vocals are mostly in English. Nothing was sounding right. And all of a sudden, I got the chorus with Punjabi lyrics. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh my god, this sounds so good with a Punjabi chorus, and this is going to sound such a different, like, a different fusion kind of song. And I said, oh, I better call up that Indian singing teacher and start getting lessons, because now I think I really want to go down this route. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't find it anywhere, the piece of paper. I just, I, I really thought I'd put it in that folder, and I'm like, it was here all the time. And then um, I couldn't find the lady's numbers, and I had no way of getting a hold of this Indian singing teacher. Um, and then it was really weird because then the next day I had to perform as part of a choir concert thing at school and um, I opened the door and I hit someone in the head and I ha happened to hit that lady in the head and she was coming in to watch the concert and I would have never been able to get a hold of her any other way mm -hmm. so I felt God was like helping me out and I was like oh God I really need an Indian singing teacher so she gave me the number and it was really weird because then I went to the folder to put that number in the folder and mm -hmm. there was that original piece of paper crumpled up with her number on it. And That's it was amazing. so weird. Like you can't explain it any other way because it was just it was just too weird. Mm -hmm. Too weird. And then I've been taking lessons with that lady ever since and she's a great teacher. Um, and everything's going good, so That's good. So yeah. not only are you exploring the Western side, but yeah. also the Indian of classical course. side. Yeah. Because I love it. Like even when I was younger I would sing Shabbat at the Gurdwara and I was very involved at the Gurdwara, I would go to Punjabi camp and mm -hmm. all that stuff. So I, I love tabla, I love sitar, I love the harmonium, I love the sounds. They're very like, even the cello, like, they all have the same kind of passionate Not sound. Not only are you working with Josh, but you've also been working with Vikas Kohli as well yes. of Fat Labs. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about that. Um, we did a remix of a Bangar song, and I believe the singer is also named Vikas. <laughs> <laughs> so that was really cool, and I think I'm in the bridge part of the song, and it's again English vocals, but mm -hmm. it's Mika singing it in, and it sounds really awesome. Okay, and then Gurpreet Chana, you mentioned as well. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of different fusion sounds coming out of yeah. your music now. Yeah. Is there any kind of element, any different, maybe world music sound that you haven't implemented yet that you want to try to work I with? I want to like implement some African drums and African mm -hmm. beats into my music. My parents were actually born in Uganda in Africa, oh. so we are from Africa. And um, the music that I heard there when I was there was so beautiful. Mm -hmm. and it was amazing. Like Everywhere we went, people would greet us with song and singing, and they've never been taught how to sing. And they're doing three, four-part harmonies, perfectly in tune, so loud, so powerful. It was just amazing, so I'd love to incorporate more of that. Okay. And you're going to do a little bit, you've done a little bit of Bollywood as well, the remix. Yeah, it's a Bollywood thing. song, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I want to ask you one thing, and that is, if there's three rules that you think you implement in your daily life just to keep yourself grounded, mm -hmm. what are they? One of them is to stay true to myself. Mm -hmm. The other one is to believe in myself and believe in my vision that I have of where I want my life to go and how I want it to play out and to believe in the best that I know is inside me. Um, so I think it's all about believing in myself, I think, because I struggled so much with that. Um, even growing up and stuff, I was made fun of a lot in school, because um, I did look like a dork, and when I look <laughs> back at the pictures, I'm like, okay, I think they had reason. We all had a couple of years <laughs> like that, don't worry about yeah. it. <laughs> so um, I, just, I just try to believe in myself. I can get really down about things, I can get really depressed about things, but I just know that I have to keep positive and keep pushing at it and keep trying my best and doing your best, so. Okay, so would you have any advice to give to any struggling singers out there who are trying to make it in the business and, you know, maybe are finding themselves at that point where you were a couple of years ago, where you weren't sure if you wanted to continue, what would you say to them? 
to keep doing it. And every day brings a new opportunity and to always remember that because you're not always going to be stuck in the same position. People are always coming in and out of your life. People will be able to help you. Um, I've got a great team behind me. Um, but it took a while to find them and I'm glad I have them. And sometimes it takes a lot of bad experiences to be able to recognize the good experiences mm -hmm. and to be able to recognize the good people. So I really think everything happens for a reason and to just keep at it. And you might, have th you might think, I have no more songs to write. I've written all the songs I can. There's nothing left for me to do. I don't believe it. I think there's always more out there. Like when a tree is growing its leaves, it's not going to say, okay, I've done. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> no more every, leaves. every spring, the new leaves keep coming. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not the same ones as last spring. So just keep at it. I think we're all here for a reason. And if singing is someone's passion, writing music is their passion, then just keep doing it. Great. OK, so the album is Spread the Word. Is there significance of this title? Uh, just spread the word about my messages and my songs and about my music. It's an EP, so it's not the full album yet. Mm -hmm. It's kind of an introduction to Preeta Chabra. Excellent. <laughs> so if you want to find out more about Preeta Chabra, <laughs> you can check out www.preetamusic.com. And you're on Facebook, Twitter, yep. Yep, all, all that, that good stuff. MySpace. Okay, so we can definitely find out about you there. Yeah. And again, the album is Spread the Word. Make sure you guys all get out there and spread the word. It's a very inspirational yeah. word, I have to say. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for being with us. Thanks for having me. And